In this video, we'll cover initial configuration of the Data Domain 3300 system. The serial port at the rear of the system is the only supported interface for initial console access. As such, do not connect to the USB, VGA, or iDRAC direct micro USB port on the front of the system, or to the iDRAC 9 dedicated management port on the rear of the system. To begin, connect a DB9 null modem cable to the serial port at the rear of the Data Domain 3300 system. Connect the system to the network via the 1 gigabit Ethernet ports with a CAT5E or CAT6 copper Ethernet cable. The base system supports four 1 gigabit Ethernet connections and can be upgraded to support two additional 10 gigabit Ethernet connections. For the purposes of this demonstration, we will connect only one 1 gigabit Ethernet cable. Next, connect the power. Four dual PSU systems. Connect each PSU to a redundant AC power source. By using redundant power sources, it allows one AC source to fail or be serviced without impacting system operation. Out of the box, the system will not automatically power on after plugging in AC power. You will need to press the power button on the front of the system to continue. From the initial start, it can take up to five minutes for the system to begin to send messages to the serial console. Using a laptop attached to the DB9 serial cable you connected, launch a terminal emulation program such as PuTTY or Hyperterm and configure the COM port you're connecting to with the following communication settings. Baud rate of 115,200, data bits, eight, stop bits, one, parity, none, flow control, none, emulation, VT100, no. You must use 115,200 baud rate for the system to work correctly. 9600 baud rate does not work. Now, press enter to activate the console. The initial username is sysadmin, and the initial password is a system serial number found either on the PSNT hang tag attached to the rear handle of the chassis, or the enterprise service tag, which is located in the lower right hand corner at the front of the chassis. Log in to the data domain console using the initial username and password. For configuration, there are two wizards a data domain system manager configuration wizard and a command line interface configuration wizard. These configuration wizards guide you through a simplified configuration of the system to get the system operating quickly. The first time the system starts, users will be presented with an EULA, which must be accepted to proceed. After which, the CLI configuration wizard starts automatically the wizard prompts you through a series of questions that provide enough information for initial system configuration and basic network connectivity. You can also begin the CLI configuration wizard manually by typing config setup. After you complete the basic configuration with CLI wizard, you can switch to using the GUI configuration wizard in Data Domain System Manager. However, you may also continue to use the CLI to further configure the system. Now, initial network setup procedure using CLI. To configure the system for network connectivity, type yes. Depending on whether or not your network is set up with DHCP, the steps you perform may vary from our demonstration, which uses a static private network. For DHCP, you can type yes to configure DHCP to automatically obtain network parameters, such as the host name, domain name, and IP addresses from a DHCP server, or you can type no to configure the parameters manually, as we will show in our demonstration. Type a fully qualified domain name for your host name, or accept the host name if your system can discover it. Type the DNS domain name, or again, accept the domain name if the system can discover it. Enable and configure each ethernet interface, and accept or decline DHCP for each interface. If the port does not use DHCP to discover network parameters automatically, type the information manually. Please note, ports ETH1A and ETH1B only appear if the optional 2x10 gigabit Ethernet NIC is installed on the system. Type the IP address of the default routing gateway, 
or accept the default gateway if the system can discover it. If you are using IPv6, type the IPv6 address of the default routing gateway or accept the IPv6 address of the default gateway if the system can discover it. If IPv6 is not in use, leave the field empty and press enter to continue. Type up to three DNS servers to use for resolving host names to IP addresses using a common separated or space separated list. Simply type a space for no DNS servers or accept the IP addresses of the DNS servers if the system can discover it. Summary of the network settings is then displayed. You can accept the settings using the command save, reject the settings and exit the CLI using cancel, or return to the beginning of the current section and change the settings with retry. Using retry displays the previous responses for each prompt. To accept the displayed value, simply press enter or type a new one. At this point, you can use the Data Domain System Manager GUI to customize the setup to your backup environment. The GUI wizard guides you through adding license key files, configuring backup clients, file shares, and protocols. This completes our demonstration of the initial CLI setup of the Data Domain 3300 solution. Watch the video covering setup finalization and customization with the Data Domain System Manager GUI to finish the setup process. For more information about setup and upgrade processes for the DD3300, visit support.emc.com.